Welcome back to Frailty Myths Finds Out, a different kind of how-to channel where we reject the idea of perfectionism, reject the idea that you have to know everything about something in order to share your knowledge, and instead lift up curiosity, lift up humility, and, you know, have some fun. Today we're going to be finding out about Frailty Myths' favorite tool, the hammer. When you go to the store, there are so many options. Slag hammer, framing hammer, mini sledge, rubber mallet, ball peen hammer, drilling hammer, blacksmith hammer, machinist hammer, dead blow hammer, non marring mallet, mason's hammer, roofing hammer, doors hammer, the patriarchy smashing hammer. We've decided that what we need is a claw hammer. So let's get a little bit more into the details about claw hammers. The parts of the hammer, for some reason, have the same names as a head. For the most part. The whole thing is the head of the hammer. The front of the hammer here is called the face. Behind the face is the neck. This is the cheek. The eye of the hammer is where the handle connects to the head. The handle itself and of course the claw. You'll see hammers that have a straight claw and you'll see hammers that have a more curved claw. And that's really going to depend on what you want to use that side of the hammer for. You're going to get more leverage with the curved hammer pulling out nails. Here we've got a straight claw. We're going to use this part of the hammer for prying and lifting and hacking so you can both smash the patriarchy and rip it apart. Super handy. Claw hammers range in weight from 10 ounces on one side, which are your finish hammers, all the way to 32 ounces. The head weights of 20 to 32 ounces are your framing hammers. And those are gonna have the heavy heads, long handles, and the rip straight claw for more power and more leverage, but are harder to control. They wear you out faster. At Frailty Miss, we know that power comes in many different forms. What's gonna be the most sustainable and what's gonna be the most appropriate for the job? For me, a 16 or 18 ounce hammer is totally adequate. All right. The things you're gonna consider when choosing the right material for your hammer are cost, durability, and comfort. Ultimately, it comes down to your preference. The most common materials that you'll see at the store are wood, fiberglass, and steel. Wood handles tend to absorb the most shock from the metal hitting the head of the nail, reverberating into your arm. They're, for most people, gonna be the most comfortable but they're gonna wear out. The steel hammers are gonna be a little bit heavier. They're gonna absorb way less of the shock, but they can last you a lifetime. So it really depends on how much hammering you're doing and what feels right for your body and in your hand. Most steel and fiberglass hammers have some kind of rubber or grip to try to compensate. At Frail Timus, it's important to name the different narratives that run in our heads when we're using tools. And those can be narratives around failure, the expectation of failure. If we try and we fail, that we'll lose access. We really Really want to break apart some of those myths. Okay, let's talk about how to use this thing. How to hold it and how to swing it. Generally when you're starting a nail, you're going to hold the nail and you're going to do some taps to get the nail started. The biggest piece of advice I ever learned about using a hammer and riding a motorcycle is to look where you want to go. Look where you want to go. Keep your eye on where you want to strike and don't forget to move your hand out of the way. Hold the hammer at the bottom of the handle, right where the grip expands just a little bit. You're gonna swing with your whole arm, not with your wrist. Raise your arm up, look right at the head of the nail, keep focused on the head of the nail, and you're gonna bring your arm down. If you look at your fingers, you're gonna hit your fingers. You can choke up a little bit to get your nail started. Regrip the hammer at the bottom. Use your whole body and let the weight of the hammer fall while looking right at the head of that nail. And it takes practice. Practicing nailing is a great way to relieve stress, to get some exercise. If you've never used a hammer before, you're gonna miss, and that's okay. Nobody is born knowing how to use tools. For lots of folks, they've never had the opportunity or been given the space to learn, to try, to fail, to get better. So that's what we're trying to do at Frailty Myths. That's it for today's show. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Georgia, one of the co-founders of Frailty Myths. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and let us know what you think in the comments or if you have any questions. You can follow us on all the things. Become a member now. It's the best way to support Frailty Myths and you get a whole bunch of amazing gifts, including your own Frailty Myths smashing the patriarchy hammer. On Frailty Myths Finds Out, we're building skills while building a more just and loving world. Join the family. Mad love.